G'day and welcome back. Today, like Monty Python, I thought I'd do something completely different. I'm going to try and build a radio. This is a contest for the uh, local uh, radio club. It's an annual contest and uh, I've left this to the absolute last minute. I've got about four days, five days to do this. Uh, I've got a capacitor here, the little pulley to tune it and the little rod to tune the little wheel. Uh, I've managed to come up with a little pointer and some valve bases. Uh, there's some tubes. It's a two tube set and some wire to put on a former which is now printing on the printer. Now as I said it's a club competition. Uh, this is the detailed plans that they give you. Here's the uh, details of the competition. It's drawn on December the 6th so you'll be seeing this a few weeks after that. The criteria is appearance so I've got to wear a suit and tie I assume. Uh, neatness, finish, calibrated dial that's going to be important. Sensitivity, number of BC stations so it's got to be able to receive the full scope of uh, stations on the dial. And the method of construction, I'm not quite sure what that means, but I'll just make it as neat as I can. It's a regenerative type receiver, so the signal will go into the 1T4, then come out of it and go back into it again to be amplified twice. Then it'll be sent off to the 3V4, and that'll amplify it uh, for the speaker. And it's powered by batteries. So here's the circuit. Uh, there's three coils all wound on one former here. Now the tuning section's here. There's the tuning capacitor and a little trimmer. Uh, signal comes in, gets amplified through a little tickler circuit there, comes back around and some of it goes on to the grid of the output valve uh, and some gets regenerated back in as an audio signal comes through, does it all again. So you're building on the original signal through here and just boosting it. There's a little pot here that limits the amount of regeneration you do otherwise it'll start howling, you just got to back it off a little bit. Now I see one there's getting rid of the carrier wave and there's your little coupling capacitor I guess and uh, there's the volume control and off it goes. So very simple. I need a 45 volt uh, power supply and a one and a half volt power supply for the filaments in the valves. I intend designing this as I build it. Now I've got a volume pot I've got to fit in there somewhere. Uh, there's a regen pot and a tuner. So there's three knobs. Uh, the tuner will have to go in the middle because I want the dial in the middle there somewhere. So I'm thinking two valves on either side of that. Now this coil is fairly big. I'm not sure if that's going to go on the top I'd like to put it underneath if I can. I'll see how that works out. So that's how it'll be set out. This is the top part here. There's the uh, deck of the chassis. So the valves there, yeah. And then the three um, tuner and uh, volume control and the regen control. I managed to get a nice pointer here for the dial. I'm going to make a round dial, I think, and uh, make a plastic lens for it again. And I think I'll try and make the dial look like it's a 30s cockpit looking aircraft. Yeah. Something like that. I don't know how that's going to come out. Now another consideration of course is the batteries. And I'm going to put a shelf in the uh, timber cabinet I'm going to make. And they these will slide underneath that. Uh, there's another one has got to go on here. So I think in width it turns out to about um, 80 millimeters. I think. Now I'm toying with the idea of putting a mirror underneath the battery tray. So if you slide it out you can look in the mirror and see what's underneath. That's going to depend on how neat underneath turns out. If it's a mess I'm not putting a mirror in. Alright, with all that, I think the batteries are going to determine how big the chassis is. Uh, this other stuff will fit in pretty much where I need to. So I'll go work it all out. I'll come back and have a look at what I'm going to do. I've quickly sketched out uh, what I want. Uh, this isn't a scale, of course, uh, but uh, basically that'll be the platform. Uh, these are the sides, and this is the front and back. So I'll use that to cut out my piece of sheet metal. Uh, here's the former for the coil, and this is finished printing now. It's got a little base on there to screw it on, a couple of screw holes. So I can screw it back onto the chassis or wherever I put it. I think it's going to have to go on the top. Now I've just gone on to Radio Museum here. Now on the screen now is an Art Deco Aussie built radio. It's called the Empire State. And I think I can make a wooden replica of that. It's not going to look exactly like that of course. But I can get close to it. Certainly steal the styling. There's the dial. Uh, I'll try and make something that looks similar to that. Um, it won't look like that because of my time constraints. But uh, I'll, something similar to that. All right, I'll head off to the shed and I'll start cutting this out. Now I've got a sheet of galvanized tin. It's only 0.6 mil thick, so pretty easy to bend. I would have preferred to use aluminium, but the aluminium I can get in a hurry. It's too thin, so I'll have to use this and I'll probably have to paint it. Pretty simple. I'll just mark this out on here, cut it, then I'll have to shape it, file it, whatever. Get it to the shape and then I'll bend it.
Oh, well, it looks pretty much like the drawing, so that's good. <laughs> so that's the basic setup. That's going to go in the center. I'll have to put this up the top here. I think that's the best place for it. And I've just got to drill two holes to put the valve bases on. So I'll do, I'll do those holes before I do anything else. The other holes I can drill easily. These are going to be done with a hole saw, so it'll be much easier on a flat surface clamped down. I'll work out where these have to go, uh, drill two holes for them, then I'll bend the uh, sheet metal to the right shape. Unfortunately I haven't got a folder, so I'm going to have to try and fold this by hand. I've got it in some merbu, or whatever you want to call it, uh, timber, it's pretty hard. So I'm going to use this bit of angle iron and I'll just have to try and push on it. That one came out alright, so I'll do the other one. But I've cut a piece of merbu in there and I'll put it in there and try and bend this one over. And I've had to grip that in the vise on an angle, it'll be okay. That's all the bending done, so that's the shape I was after, so I'm happy with that so far. There is another test I've got to do. Now the other test to do is put it on a flat surface here and just see if it wobbles. That's perfect. Good. I was a bit worried about that. I'm going to start drilling some mount holes for all the bits that are going to go on. Uh, this shaft on the capacitor here is off-center, so uh, it's not as easy as I'd hoped. <laughs> so there's the center line, so the shaft lines up with it. I've taped around the edge of it. I've got to pick up the holes in the back here. So I'll cut a piece of cardboard to the exact size here and then I should be able to transfer the holes over. I've had to switch to another camera and the audio is not as good on this one. Uh, there's my little cardboard. Uh, now I just flip this over, uh, put that on there, line it all up and I'll just find the holes and punch them through. So far so good. I've done most of the things I need to do. There's probably things I've forgotten. I do need to put an earth and an antenna point. So I've got a couple of old ones here. I'll clean them up and put them in. So I'll drill a hole for that. And I think that's about it as far as I can think of at the moment. Now my original plan was to assemble it all, get it working, then strip it all down again and paint it because I wasn't keen on the galvanized. But I guess it doesn't look that bad actually. So maybe I'll just skip that bit. If I don't have to paint it, that saves me a lot of time. I wonder if I could just kind of polish it a bit with some brasso or something to just bring it up. I'll try it on a bit of scrap, see what it comes up like. I just polished that with a bit of brasso and it comes up pretty good. So I'll just do that to the whole thing. I won't bother painting. That's a great saving of time. Now you may have noticed I put a doubler behind the front panel here. When I put the volume pot and the, the other pot in here, that'll clamp that all together. And it's quite sturdy now. It's just a bit flimsy before, so I wasn't keen on it. So I've modified it and uh, yeah, that, that's come up really nice. That's polished up pretty well, so I'm going to start putting it together. I've put most of the components on the chassis. The next thing I need to do is do the coil. So here's the printed coil I made, uh, here's the wire, it's 032 millimeters, And I've got to try and get three coils on here, three separate coils. Alright, I think I'm ready to go. I've drilled a tiny hole here, that's about 4 millimeters from the end there. I'll put the wire in. I 
Alright, I've pulled it through. Now I've got a bit of tape here. I'm going to tape that first one on. So now all I have to do is start winding. I've got the spool of wire on a screwdriver in the vise there. I'm running the wire through a book just to keep some tension on it. I hope that works. Could use more tension actually. Yeah, it needs more tension. So I've put my drill on the book there. We'll see if that gives us a bit more. That seems better. So I've got to put 10 turns on this. Um, I'll keep going and I'll come back when I've got 10 turns on. Right, this is number 10 coming up. Um, and apparently, if I pull that sticky tape back, that might hold it. I want the wire on the inside of the coil, so I'm going to drill a little hole there and pass it through. So that looks pretty good. I've got to start the next winding at four and a half millimeters from the end of the last one. Okay, there's four and a half millimetres. I'll just put the wire through the hole. I've retrieved the wire, I've pulled the tape back and I'll just put it over the top again. And we start again. There's one turn done. I'm just coming up to number two. I've got to do 110, so uh, I'll come back when I'm getting close to 110, I think. There's 109, so just one more to go. Pull that tape back. All right, and there's 110. So I'll drill a hole in the plastic there. And just poke the wire through again. Now I have to do another one at eight turns, so I'll just do that and uh, come back when I've finished. Right. Uh, there it is, all done. Looks pretty good. Uh, it was a bit easier than I thought. I'd sort of been worrying about this, but uh, worked all right. Now what I'm thinking of doing is just give it a coat of lacquer just to hold it in position so the wires don't move around. I'll let it dry, go and have my dinner, and then come back. That all done. I've sprayed it with some lacquer, so the wires are holding there all right. Now watch the number of videos I'm doing this using the tape and stuff. I also had trouble counting the turns and you go cross-eyed looking at the coil itself. So I took a photo of it and loaded it into Microsoft Paint. I then marked every 10 turns with a paintbrush and I was able to count them quite easily that way. Uh, it turned out I had one too many so I had to wind one off. Now my next challenge is to transfer what's on here into here. Now my original intention was to film what I was doing but it's just not going to work because it's too hard for me to even do it without having to try and stop to film it. I'll just stop from time to time and show you where I'm up to. Now I've assembled most of the front end here. Uh, there's some components here, of course you can see. I'm going to run a ground line along there and the components can connect to that and then I'll ground it to the chassis. I was actually thinking I was going to have to use tag strips or something like that, but I don't think I'll need to. I think I can just mount all the components on the lugs that are on the various controls or the valve bases. 
Now I've mounted the antenna coil and that's all connected up. Everything's um, connected off that. Uh, there's the top of it. I've got the antenna coil wired in. I do have to put a trimmer capacitor onto the uh, tuning capacity here somewhere. Now what I've done so far is all this, um, all these coils are connected. So the antenna's all connected. This section here is all done uh, around here. There's little uh, tickler coils done to here. I haven't got a line out there yet. And I've done all that. So yeah, I've done most of it. I haven't done that little capacitor there. As I said, I was going to film some of it, um, but uh, it, the time constraint's just too great. So I need to get this finished. So I'll come back when I've done that part. I'm back and I've actually finished it um, as far as the chassis is concerned. So there it is. It's so simple, um, but still took me a lot of brain power to get it all right to make sure I didn't make any mistakes. Now I've just temporarily taped the uh, a C cell in here for one and a half volts. Um, I'll take that off eventually. Uh, and of course that'll go in the battery tray. But uh, everything's finished and I'm going to give it a go. Now I've set up a speaker and an output transformer at the back. So this is temporary. I'm not sure what I'm going to use there. This is an expensive output transformer. I've got to work something out with that. Uh, there's my 45 volt. Uh, supply and uh, I call that the Great Wall of Chinese Batteries. So there's five 9 volt batteries there. As I said the 1.5 volts taped to the side there. I've got an antenna connected to it. Alright I think I'm ready to go. Uh, I've elevated the speaker so it's up near the microphone so we can hear it. Let's turn it on. And there's nothing which I, <laughs> I kind of expected. There's nothing. Hmm. That's disappointing. Okay, I'll turn it over. We'll have a look. That should be 47 there. That's the outside of the switch. This one here should be one and a half. That's the uh, filaments. I'll just put my finger via a screwdriver on the grid. Oh, there's something there. Now I know we've got voltages, uh, we know the amp works because I put my finger on it. Um, this end may not be working, but I've got an idea. Hang on a sec. My good friend at the club has also built one of these and he said it won't work without a ground. So I'll put a ground on it. I will keep <laughs> public service growth in line with population growth. Cameron Dick, for the first time, you know what, I'm not going to worry about that. So they have completely abandoned the fiscal principle number six? Yes. Yes, in effect, uh, because they're going to increase... Yes, Ebenezer, that's the one we're looking for, so congratulations. Then my final scenes, I was dressed in this... ...for living. Before I'm for the Australian government... Canberra spoke by S. Shanahan. Liz Moore, heading to the boxes for race five, Newcastle in three minutes, then Horsham. All we need at Menangle is the paying signal, nine, two, one, and seven. Let's go to Liz Moore. A high percentage of the quaddies going one out here with the favourite Phantom Clyde for Mel Ross and John Free. 125 now. The best he could have obtained on TOB Fix was his open quote, which is where its record reads 12. Well, it's working, but not very loud. Um, I tested these two tubes. They're quite all right. Um, but the housing market's going great. And they note that the residential market is very strong right now, which seems strange because we're in a recession. It's the non-residential market which is really struggling. But that, they reckon, should pick up next year. And while we mm, talk... Yeah. I'm pretty happy with the way it's working. Uh, I, it needs to have a bit more volume if, if I can try and get it out of it. Uh, this regen control is not doing what it should, I don't think. Uh, it, it starts regenerating and then it drops off. And I'm, I don't know if that's how it's supposed to work or not. Maybe it does. But I need to move on to the case. I've got one and a half days, maybe two days to try and get all this done. And I've, it's really hard work. I'll go out in the workshop. I've got to come up with an idea of how big to make it, like proportional. So height to width and all that. And I've got to leave enough room to get a speaker in, and it's got to have a little dial here somewhere. So I'll go out in the workshop, I'll take this with me, and we'll try and work something out. Now here's a, here's a front on and a side view of the radio. I was going to mimic uh, or steal the styling cues from it. 
Now this is Bakelite and uh, I can't make a wooden version of that, certainly not in a day or half a day. Now this is a 1934 Empire State and it's actually made of timber. So it's got much the same styling but in a timber base. It's very hard to see, it's not a very good photo. Uh, but basically it's got the two panels on the side. Uh, it's just a square or a cube. And uh, yeah, some highlights in the front. There's a little bit of fancy stuff across the bottom here. Uh, I can mimic that, you can't see it in the photo, it's too... too uh, Fuzzy. Now there's the radio and I've sort of laid it out. There's a A speaker. I think it'll be about that size. So to fit everything in there it needs to be about 275 millimeters high. So to give myself some room I'll make it 290. Then I'll add 24 millimeters to allow for the timber on the top and bottom. And of course the width is 170 odd. There it is. 175. So that'll be 175 there. Plus 24 mil for the thickness of the timber. Let's make it 200. And this one will be um, 314 high. I'll make it 315. And that'll give me plenty of room. I'm pretty sure there'll be enough room. Might just add another 10 mil to that to give me a bit more room. Actually, I'll add 20. So 335 by 200. Now for depth, I think I'll need. 110 at least. Actually I'll make it 110 then the uh, back can sit in a little bit. So 110 in the depth. Alright I'll start cutting this up. Uh, I've got a sheet of MDF here that I'm going to use for the entire case. Uh, it's 9mm thick so it's fairly light. So I'll measure up and uh, cut out the pieces I need. All I need is the two sides at the top and the bottom at the moment. I've cut the two sides and I've, I've made them wider than what I said because they didn't look right. They were too narrow, too skinny. So I'm just going to reassess the height and I've got it at 330 something and it's way too high. So I'm going to say we probably only need 300. Now I was going to re rebate the uh, top in and the bottom. Uh, I'll rebate the sides in too. So it would be easier if I just cut this one and just put a re rebate around it or wrap it if you pronounce it that way. Now this is what I've ended up with. Uh, it's not as deep as I originally intended. I think I cut about 20 or so mil off the, the depth there. Um, now it's a bit shorter of course. We dropped another 30 odd millimetres there too. So, uh, but I, I still think it's a bit too high. It's got to have these side plates put on so that'll build out the bulk of the sides there. But I think before I can put this box together I need to work out where the dial's going to go, how big it's going to be. Uh, where it's going to be situated so that I can actually do this properly because I've got to cut out the front uh, panel here and cut the speaker and the dial knobs before I put it all in here. It's no good assembling it and then trying to do it all later. So I'll leave this for tonight. Uh, it's pretty late so I'm going to go and uh, I'll go and do the dial now and in the morning I could be able to glue it all together knowing exactly what I'm going to do. Now I just realized of course if I'm going to make the dial I need to have something to adhere it to uh, so I've got to put a panel in front of this um, pulley and behind the needle. So I'll cut that up now and we'll bend it into shape. Uh, I've cut a bit of thin aluminium out, that'll be more than adequate. Uh, I've put a little mark there, I'm going to bend it at 90 degrees. I've got to put a joggle in it so that it lines up because the pulley sticks out from the chassis so it's got to come out and then up again. I needed to cut it in to fit around the two controls here. Uh, I've drilled some holes, now I've bent it and I've marked where the centre of the spindle goes there. Okay, Ooh, yeah, a little bit out there. That wasn't very good. Alright, I can just bend that a bit further up and that'll lower that down, so I'm not too worried. Alright, there we go. Uh, that's perfect now. I'll just measure from the centre there to the edge. It's about four and a half uh, centimetres. Now I'll just come up here, cut that off at four and a half centimetres, and that'll be a square. I'll just go a bit further up and just put a bend in it, I think. I've screwed all that on. I can now put a bit of board behind there or paper or something and mark where all the stations are as I tune them. Now I can transfer that to my computer and I'll make up a little uh, dial. Okay. I've put the radio inside. I've connected it up. It's ready to go. I've put the pointer on 
and I've got a piece of paper behind there to mark where the stations are. Now, apparently Australia's um, AM stations run from 526.5 to 1605.5, uh, so we'll start there. I don't know if we're going to get this, uh, but I'll put it in at, um, say, 527. 527, see if I can get it on the radio. I'm just doing this to make sure it gets the full frequency range. No, not there. I think what will be better is I'll set this to here and find out where it is. Oh, it's nowhere. Okay. I'll try that again. I had a capacitor on there, but of course we don't need. So I've got it on the 527. I'll just see if I can get it or not. This may not work. This capacitor is not going to have a lot of effect because the tuning gang's closed, but it's all I've got. Well, that's not very loud. And there it is there. All right, we'll call that 527. Hmm. Hang on. Uh, put a mark there, and it's, <laughs> it's out. So. We'll get 527. I'll take it up to 16 and we'll see what's up that end. Alright, there's 1605. Oh, I'm calling that close enough. So, what I'll do is I'll go to 1000 and mark that and uh, just fill in the gaps between. So there's a thousand there, I'll find it on here. Uh, this is going to take a little while, so I'll go through, put 800, 900, 1000, 11, so on, and just fill in the gaps there. Then I'll take the sheet off and we'll go and put it into the computer. All right, bit of a change of plans. I have finished. I switched over to this frequency generator. This is so much easier. I just put it on 600 and just flicked it up <laughs> and went through the channels in no time. So I've set it out. Uh, there it is there and it looks really good. Uh, I'll just show you. So I've got the generator on 600. There it is there. It's, it's perfect. So I go to 700. Look at that. 800. even 900 yeah so that's pinpoint accurate so I'll take this card off here and put it in the scanner I'll scan it into the computer and then just use my um, program to put the numbers on it and some little patterns or whatever I need make it look pretty now in another breakthrough I found a really small speaker here that works pretty well uh, for the quality you're getting out of this set this is plenty so I can use a smaller speaker, I can shrink down the height of that cabinet I've made and this will be much better. So don't need a 4 inch speaker, this is great. I spent a good deal of time last night making a scale or a graphic with the stations on it and I tuned it all up. But I found this capacitor was sitting way too low, uh, there wasn't enough clearance between here and there. So I've put it on little stilts, it's sitting up quite high there. <laughs> anyway, it works alright. Because I've raised this tuning capacitor, my little plate didn't fit anymore, it was way too low. So I've drilled two new holes in the chassis here, I'm just going to put screws through and hold it in the right place. Uh, there's a little felt on the back here, and that'll rub on this plate, and uh, keep it nice and smooth, but keep it hard against this um, that little uh, wheel. So I'll put this on, and I'll move on to the next bit. Alright, I'm back to determining the height I want this thing, and I was trying to make it more squat. Now I've come up with a, an even smaller speaker, and uh, this is cute, it's not, not as bulbous as the other one was. I'm printing out a bezel at the moment, this white sheet of paper is the size of the outside of the bezel. Now I don't think I can cut it much smaller, because it's still got to have a decent sized speaker cut out in the top. I want to put some little bits of timber across here, so I need something to grip it on. So I think I'm going to have to leave it the same height, even though I'm using a smaller speaker, 
the speaker hole still has to be proportional so uh, there it is I've glued the box together uh, there's the front I've cut uh, I'm going to cut all the uh, holes in the front now while this box dries I don't want to put any nails in here because I want to route the edges I've printed out a bezel to put on the front and that's got to go there I've been cutting in this out with a router I've just got to make one final cut and that should be it I've got to cut the speaker out. The, this one here has kind of got a shape to it because it's got a round dial. I've got a square dial. So I'll have to go square. I think I'll just make it square. There's no point in rounding that, is there? Actually make it a bit wider. I'm going to put these little half rounds across it like that, that, either side. So I could probably make it a bit of a rectangle, couldn't I? So I think I'll keep that height and I'll just make it maybe another 15mm wider each side, so 30mm total. Alright, so that's what I've got. There's the speaker, uh, the dial, and of course the uh, holes for the controls. Now I need to fit a dial glass in here, although the material is about 0.8mm thick. So I was going to put a little rebate in here for the glass to sit in, but I'm thinking now I, I was going to put it in here initially and then I didn't do it because I thought this would be too thin, but it's pretty thick now. So maybe I'll reprint this. It's got a slight problem with these little raised rails along here they're slightly off center so I might reprint it and I'll uh, build the rebate into it so I'll do that but I'll keep that as a specimen they'll come out the same size now I can't imagine why I can't glue this in I think I'll glue this into the cabinet first and then I'll do all the little decorations I want to put a little skirt along here um, and I'm going to put some grooves in it um, so I'll cut that with the router uh, this might be a bit thick, so I'll see how I go. So I'm going to route at least three or four grooves. I'll try and get four grooves at least in there. Now I managed to get five grooves in there. Uh, I just want to round the edges off here, and that'll finish it off. Now the next thing I want to do is round all the edges on this. Around here, around here, and the top. Uh, the bottom I'll leave as it is. Now I've got a rounding bit in there, so I'll just run around. Take only a few seconds. There's the moulding, uh, there's the bezel, uh, the knobs will be in the middle of course. Um, I think I'll, I'll live with that, I'm not going to get too carried away. Now I've got these half rounds of course, I'm going to put these up here somewhere. So maybe like that and another one there, yeah, whatever. Uh, I'll round them off on the top and bottom. I hope they look alright. I've cut the two side panels here, um, yeah, it looks pretty cool. So that's going to go in there. They'll go there, yeah, that kind of looks like the picture. <laughs> so my camera's gone flat. Uh, I'm going to fill all this with uh, body filler. Then I will um, sand it all smooth. Uh, I will glue these on when I've got everything smooth and uh, sand these up as well. And then once it's all sanded up, uh, I can fit these on. I don't want to do these. Uh, they'll get in the way while I'm trying to sand it. Uh, now I'm going to paint the uh, bezel silver. This uh, paper will be silver as well. I'll see how that looks. Uh, I've got silver uh, material for the speaker here. Uh, that looks good. It's got a black line through it. And I'll paint the case black. I've pretty much finished it. I put the sides on here. Uh, I've put the little front moulding on. And uh, I made a little grill up for the front there. So that'll be it there. So that'll have to do. It looks okay. I just got to let it dry a bit longer. I've got a sand in here. I should have sanded before I put it on. There's a bit of a gap there for some reason. So I'll have to fill that. Alright, it's ready to paint. Um, I filled up any joins that had a bit of a gap. I'm going to use an automotive uh, primer filler. This sticks pretty well to wood, so and it gives a nice thick coat. And I can sand that back and it will top coat straight over the top. Now 
Now this is the speaker I'm going to fit and uh, I've cut a hole for it so uh, yeah, it fits alright in there. Now this is the covering I was going to use and it's a black and silver, it looks pretty good. Um, it, it, you can stretch it any way you like so it's really hard to put on. Now put staples along here just to hold it in a straight line and I was going to glue it on but I wonder if I could just staple it on the face here because this goes up against the inside of the radio, you can't see it. But I could control it then. If I glue it, it all happens at once. Alright, that looks okay. Now the test is, because this has got vertical lines and I've got vertical bars, whether they will line up or not. That doesn't look bad. Good. Okay. This camera is going to go flat in a second, but I'll just quickly do the black. You might be able to see it before it goes... So that's come out alright, yeah it looks looks good. I think with the silver highlights I think it'll come up okay. If not I could probably change the colour of this bar down the bottom here perhaps. Anyway we'll see how it comes up uh, tomorrow. I'll clean it all up and start assembling the radio. Good morning. Uh, I've let the case dry overnight and it's looking pretty good. I've just moved it out of here so it doesn't get uh, dust or anything on it. But I still have to make a lens for the dial. If you saw my Emerson video, you would have seen me trial and error doing this. Um, I've made another mould to suit this one. I've got a bit of plastic here, so I'll put that in there. I, I won't do it yet. Uh, and I'm going to bake that for about 20 minutes or so at 130 degrees C. And I'm going to use this bar as a press, not too heavy. Now I'm not going to show you the whole process. If you didn't see the Emerson video, go and have a look. And uh, I spend quite a bit of time doing this. So I'll place that on there and I'll put the whole thing in the oven, as I said, 20 minutes, 130, see how it comes out. Alright, this is good and warm now. Just going to put that there. So I'll just let that cool off for about 20 minutes and we'll have a look at it. Okay, let's see how this came out. It's got a dimple there. It's come out alright. It's got a little dimple in it for some reason. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, it's got little, you can see them there, just a little dimple there. I don't know what that's from. This is what I had last time. It has little raised things. Maybe it's getting too hot. So maybe I'll try just a slightly lower temperature again. Um, yeah, that's a bit disappointing. Everything's clear in there, so perhaps I just won't heat it quite as high. Hmm, okay. I've cut a new bit of plastic, it's perfectly clean, and I'll put it back in the oven and we'll try it again. I might try it at a slightly lower temperature this time. Alright, it's in the oven and I've just got it on 120 this time. Okay, I've got that out of the oven and I'll just do the same again. Alright, so I'll leave that for 20 minutes again to cool off and have a look at that one. Hopefully that comes out alright. Alright, let's have a go at this one. Oh, it's got a big line across it. Now this one's got a big line across it. What happened was I just laid the plastic here and then put the two halves in the oven instead of one on top of the other. So this blew away with the fan going in the oven and uh, I had to reposition it. So now it's got a line there. Uh, well, once again, that's disappointing, but I'll probably use the first one. The case is fairly dry now. Um, there's the bezel that I made and I put a recess in the back to put the lens in uh, and I've painted it silver. So I can fit that on now I think. Now I've put a little bit of low adhesion tape here to guide me. Uh, I've got four screws to put in here. So just drill a little hole in there. These screws are tiny. I haven't put the lens in yet. I'll get a couple of screws in, then I'll take it off and do the lens. Actually, I'll put all four screws in, that'll take them out again. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Uh, apart from the little dimple in the glass, it's, uh, it's fine. 
I've screwed the speaker baffle plate in to make sure it fits. I'll take it out later and I'll fit the speaker to it and I've got to put the output transformer here somewhere. Now the next thing I need to do is make a battery holder. Now the radio is going to sit on top and there's a gap on the bottom. The batteries will go in the bottom here. Here's the batteries I'm going to use. I've got five of these nine volts and I've got a D cell to go in here, D cell battery. So I'll just make the case so that this is a nice snug fit and it fits in between the two sides of the chassis. There's the batteries fitted under the radio so I'm just going to make a simple tray that they'll sit in. It'll just slide underneath and sit there. Now there's the frame of it. With a bit of luck it should fit. That's pretty good. Okay. Good. I'll just make a base. I'll glue it all together. I've cut a base out for it now and it's sitting in there so I've just got to glue it all together. Uh, I've made it out of three ply which looks alright. I'm going to clear coat it so I don't have to wait to paint to dry. Uh, and I've just put some little rebates in there to give it a bit of extra strength. So I'll glue all that together and we'll have a look in a minute. While my little battery tray is uh, drying I'll just put some screws in here. I've got two already in there and just making sure they don't come through the front. That part's finished. I won't put it in until I've soldered the wires on here. It's going to be too hard to get into uh, while it's fitted in the radio. So I'll just put that aside. The dial and pointer, it's all finished. I'm not touching that again. So I'm going to mount the radio into the case now. Now what I'm going to do is put some bolts up from the bottom and I'll put some nuts on here to hold it all. Uh, I've not made it very easy for myself. I've got to get right in the back here to, to try and pick up the hole. So I've drilled little pilot holes there. Here's the bolt sticking through here. I'll just measure the pitch from here to the next hole and uh, just transfer it to the base here and just come back through and do the other one and uh, we'll come back when I've done that. I've cleaned up that little box I made yesterday and I've put some little runners on it. There's grooves in the bottom of the radio here so they fit in there and just slide in and out. Now I want it to stop there so I'm going to put a stop on the inside of the case here later on. Uh, but it can flop up and down so I thought I'll make a little uh, bracket to fit over the top here so it doesn't flop. And I've got some little bits of aluminium here. I'm just going to bend them. Uh, they'll sit over the top of this edge here and just hold it down. And I'll attach it to the bolts uh, that are holding the chassis in. I've got a little pencil mark along there. I'm going to bend that so that'll fit over the top here. But before I do, I'm going to put a small cut on one end. Just like that. And I'm going to put a slightly longer one at the other end. Maybe about that long. And I'll just grip it. I'm just going to bend it. And now the little cup there, I'll just bend that up so that it guides the drawer in when it goes in. And this end one, I'm going to bend it down. Hopefully. Just going to bend it down and then up again. So that'll make a little friction stop to kind of hold it there. I've done both of these now and I've put slots in the bottom there so that I can get these in. Uh, I'll put the nuts on here and leave them loose then I can put that in and slot it in otherwise I'd never get the nuts on at the back there. I need to cut these shafts to the correct length. I'm going to use the centre one there as a guide and that's coming in at about 11 millimetres. So I'll just mark these. So I'll pull the radio out again and I'll cut these off and we're just about ready to assemble it. I said earlier in the video I might put a mirror on the bottom so that you can see underneath. I don't know if the judges need to be able to see underneath or not. The requirement was to build a radio, not necessarily a case, so I may well have gone overboard here. Anyway, I'll put a mirror in. If they need to see inside, they can see. Uh, so I've got a mirror here. Um, it's a bit wide. I've got to cut it. What I know about scoring glass, you could write on a postage stamp. Uh, but I've got a glass cutter here, so I'm going to give it a go. And 
And oops. And press the end there. Now as luck would have it, I didn't have the square on properly and I've got a crooked line. But anyway, I'll practice on this bit. I've got another mirror there. And I've got it alright except for there. I'll see if I can salvage this piece of mirror. Uh, I don't need to, I've got the other one, but I'll see how I go. <laughs> this time I'll try another method. I've put a match there this time. Oh, there you go. That's not bad. Okay, I'll use that. Alright, there's where the glass goes. I'm just going to sit it there and uh, that's come up pretty good. I'm happy with that. Now I'll rub, rub some wet and dry sandpaper around all the edges to make sure they're not sharp. But uh, that was pretty easy. I'll, I'll add glass cutting to my resume. I've put blobs of silicon on the mirror so I can just push it down now and let it sit for a while. It'll glue itself on. Here's the mirror and our little tray should slide over the top here. Yeah. Alright, that's great. Terrific. Here's my battery tray. It's ready for paint. I was originally going to do it in silver so it sort of matched the rest of it. But due to time constraints, the judging's tomorrow and uh, I can't hand it to them with wet paint on it. So I'm just going to put some clear on it, see what it looks like. If it looks too bad, I'll go back to the silver and try and put it in the oven for a couple of hours. I'll, I'll let that dry, give it a few more coats, see how it comes up. While the battery tray is drying, I can put the radio in. I can't quite finish it because I need the tray to measure those little uh, brackets I made. But I can certainly put the screws in. Before I do put the chassis, I'm going to open the holes in the case for these shafts. It's, they're just a bit too tight. So I'll put it back in again. Now I've got to fit these little brackets in. I've got the nuts and washers on these um, screws. So that should just clip in there like that. There we go. I can do the top one up okay. And I'll have to get a spanner in down there and a little ring spanner and I'll get on that back one. But I need to get the tray in here first to adjust the width. I bought the radio inside and I'm just going to solder up these speaker wires. I'll just try and get this in here. It's a very snug fit. There we go. I haven't seen this all together yet, so it'll be interesting. I'll turn it up, we'll see what it looks like. There it is, looks pretty good, I reckon. The silver dial, silver surround with the black, and the silver and black um, material here. Yeah, it looks really good. Very stylish. Good. Now I've got some knobs. I've painted them black. They were brown and I didn't like them, so I've painted them black. Uh, they're still drying along next to the uh, little tray for the batteries. So when they're all dry, I'll come and put it all together. Um, there's the mirror, so you can see inside. I didn't think you'd be able to, but uh, this came up okay. And I've, the little battery compartment's dry enough. And uh, it fits in pretty good. I've put the little supports in and it locks it. It's very tight. I, I can't believe how well that's locking it. I'm printing out a little knob and I'm having trouble with it. It's not working as well as it should. So when I get that on there, I'll be able to pull this out. I may even just make a bit of stainless steel and make a little clip here or something. Might be better actually. I was just thinking about it. I've got some heavy string out there. I wonder if I just put two holes and make a little uh, uh, rope hanging down there. That'd work all right. Now there's a bit of cord that I've got, uh, that'll, that'll go down there, I reckon that'll look good. So I'll ditch the knob idea and I'll put that in. Now I've just fitted all the batteries and I come across a small problem. It doesn't fit. <laughs> I was originally going to put C cells in there and then I thought I'll see if I can get a D cell and I measured it and uh, obviously didn't measure it very well, so it doesn't fit at all. So like the knob, I am going to have to ditch this D cell and I'll go back to my original plan which was a C cell. All right, that's the original C cell that I was going to use. And that, that'll fit all right. Okay. So I'll screw this base to the wood and uh, put some holes in there, put my rope in. And we're nearly there. There's a little rope, looks quite neat. And I've mounted the C battery in there. And yeah, the wires are a little untidy, not much you can do, I guess. But uh, that fits very nice. 
Now the only thing left to do is wait for the knobs to dry and I'll put those on and we'll have a final look and turn it on, see if it still works. Okay, it's all set up and we'll just turn it on. You pulled it out of nowhere there. Well done, Tom. And well played. Got right, a couple right there. Great you have job. a good day. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. You too. Bye. Yeah, that's working very well. <laughs> That's a very good song. Uh, series. Uh, let's start with you, Noni. I mean, are you are you keen to be part of it? That's 4BH, which is hard to get, so it's doing really well. stages, takes the lead close home and stretches away to win out. Three chrome yellow the winner. Bubble the noses between ten retro effect and six azores for second and third. I'm not sure what that is. Might be 4 BC. Oops, there's the. There's the regen coming in there. So that station, I don't know where that is. That'll be a long way away. But the regen, if you turn it up, it starts howling. So you just turn it back till it stops. There you are. Okay, that's Bundaberg. Bundaberg would be 200 miles away. So that is working really well. It's, it's picking up stations I would never thought it would get. So very happy with the way this is working. I did actually break off this half round. I think I dropped something through the back of the radio and it broke it off. So I've glued it back on. It, it looks alright. There's a little bit of a paint crease up the top. But, uh, that's nothing. It's pretty late. It's half past 11. And I'm going to get up in the morning and go to this Christmas function for the club. And I'll take this along with me. And we'll see how we go with the judging. I don't know if I've gone too far. Not far enough. I don't know what the standard's going to be. Uh, I might be the only one in the competition. <laughs> We're at the Christmas party. And uh, there's also a car boot sale. Some old dial plates. AWA. There's a guitar amp. A collection of books for sale. I know 34 Air Zone. It's in nice condition. An old dictaphone. Hmm. Here's some of the contenders. There's five very interesting radios out there for you to have a look at if you haven't already looked at them. They all function, they all work, they're all different. What we judged them on, Peter and I judged them on, was construction, in other words, how they were made. The big one for me was adherence to my design. Uh, I didn't want extra bits put in there. So the original design was, uh, how can we make this with the minimal numbers of components? And then we looked at ease of use. How easy was it to use this radio? Uh, and the last one, which we had to put in to divide all the 
entries up a little bit was appearance. So, without further ado, uh, the winner on 22 points was my number two, which is David Tipton for the Empire State Tune Master Radio. <laughs> Oh, no, you're going to get on this side of the camera. <laughs> wow, what a surprise that was. I really didn't think I would get that first prize. I, I'd given it away. The other entries were brilliant. And I thought maybe I'd gone over the top with this, but boy, I was only just um, qualified, I think. Uh, the prize I got was a JCAR gift card. JCAR is the local uh, electronics supplier. The club event today was the Historical Wireless Society of South East Queensland. And if you're thinking into getting into radio collecting or just interested, um, have a look at the local clubs. Uh, these people have been absolutely brilliant to me and uh, they're so helpful. If you've got any problems, they'll help you through. There's no problem at all. Now, that club is based in South East Queensland, so it kind of serves the local area. The main club for New South Wales, Victoria and South Australia is HERSA, Historical Radio Society of Australia. I'm also in that club and, of course, they're great too. You can get uh, parts, valves, whatever. They've all, both of them have got valve banks. You can get parts like that. Uh, service manuals they might have. And, as I said, uh, information if you need it. I'm going to leave a link for both of those clubs in the description below. Uh, it's Christmas Day in Australia. It'll be maybe Christmas Eve in some places in the world. If you celebrate Christmas, I wish you a very Merry Christmas. If you don't celebrate Christmas, then have a very happy day. And I'd like to wish everybody a very happy and healthy 2021 and it has to be better than 2020. I'm going on a short hiatus. Uh, we're going to visit relatives and perhaps travel around a little bit. So I probably won't get a video out till late January, maybe early February. So until then, I hope you can join me for my next radio adventure. <laughs>